so fast. Fast. Actually, it's a human-powered bicycle. The world speed record posted last year was an incredible 139.45 kilometers per hour. Amazing. Wow. The World Human Powered Speed Challenge is held every autumn. Engineers gather from all over the world to see who can go fastest using only human power. This is the 16th year of competition, and a Japanese team is participating for the first time. The team was created in December 2015. It includes leading technicians involved in motorcycle and car development, as well as a professional road racer. They had only 10 months to develop their bicycle before the competition. Their goal? We want to top 140 kilometers per hour. That's all. A new world record. The team built its first bicycle in four months. In March, they competed against a Dutch team that placed third in last year's competition. Crazy fast! And they won! Based on that first bike, they began work on a new, faster model to use in the competition. After 10 months of thorough preparation, they bring it to the United States. But a cruel ordeal awaits them at the competition. Just before the race, their bike breaks down. What's wrong? They can't compete. We can't run today. We can't? They can't even start! Oh. There's no way. The team faces a full-blown crisis. But their determination leads to a miraculous run! Oh, you're right. This way. We'll document all of the team's efforts to break the world record. So much space. Yeah. Wow. Such a straight line. <laughs> it's mind-boggling. It's like that horizon balloon they use in vision tests. I knew it looked familiar. <laughs> Just there, right? Yes. What an amazing place. Supreme skills. Yeah. We're in Battle Mountain in the American state of Nevada. This flat, straight road is the race course. Contestants go eight kilometers, almost all of which are used as an approach. The final 200 meters are the measurement zone. Riders aim for the highest average speed in the zone. This course must be a racer's dream. Yes, the straight road must be enticing. I bet they can't wait. Yes. The competition lasts six days. Fifteen teams from nine countries will participate. Only teams that pass the prelims get to the finals. The team that posts the fastest run over the course of the entire competition wins. The prelims are held in the morning of the first day. The Japanese team prepares. The bike is carried by the engineers who developed its body. Team leader Atsuya Ikegami is in charge of bike design. His teammate Hikoseki designed the cover called the cowl. To get more speed for the competition, both men made major design changes to the first bike. The secret lies in reducing the size of the bike body to minimize air friction. 
that meant modifying the cowl that covers the bike, which is Seki's field of expertise. Seki made several changes that minimized the shape without hampering the rider's movement. Here, for example, only one millimeter separates the rider's toes from the cowl. After fabricating the body, they make sure the rider's feet don't hit the cowl. Wow! The feet are clear. All right. <laughs> Great. Just as designed. <laughs> Compared with the first one, the new cowl is much smaller. The bike frame and cowl are now combined into a single unit. That reduces the bike's height by 6.6 .6 centimeters. They also removed the front window that caused air friction at the seams. Now the rider uses a miniature camera to see. The cowl is virtually seamless. These improvements have reduced air friction by 30%. In theory, this new model has a chance of breaking the world record. But bike designer Ikigami has one more trick up his sleeve. He adds suspension to absorb bumps from the road. At speeds of over 100 kilometers per hour, the front wheel bounces off the ground, wasting propelling force. Ikigami hopes the suspension will increase the bike's speed. In 16 years of competition, no one's used suspension before. I hope people will see it and say, hmm, that Japanese team's doing something really intriguing. The bike created by Ikigami and Seki will be ridden by Ryohei Komori. He's a professional road racer. I've never done this before, so I really don't know how it'll go. At 7.30 a.m., the prelims begin. At four kilometers, it's half the length of the finals. Racers who fail to break 72.42 kilometers per hour must drop out here. It's Japan's turn. Okay, here we go. Releasing. Yes. Good. It seems to be a steady ride. He enters the 200 meter measurement zone. He's through. Average speed, 88.25. Japan qualifies for the finals. Things are looking good. After the prelims, the Japanese team is ranked seventh out of 15 teams. For first time participants, it's a great start. They're in good shape to compete in the finals in the evening. However, Komori has encountered two problems. Each time around, I mean, every time I pedal, it makes a clanking sound. He says the bike made a strange sound as he picked up speed in the second half. There's another concern. The suspension feels uncomfortable, like I'm floating. It might be better to take it out. A strange noise and an uncomfortable suspension. They have just four hours before the finals. Can Ikigami solve these two problems in time?
origami starts with the noise. It doesn't take long for him to find the cause. The wheel covers hitting the wheel. The wheel cover rubs against the bike weight. Made thin to lighten bike weight, the cover has deformed inside. It's too late to make a new one, so Ikigami attaches a wood strip on the outside to improve rigidity. Compared with this side, I've made this side rigid. Ikigami demonstrates his skill. Using light, strong wood, he's able to fix the noise problem right away. But what about the suspension? Why does his secret weapon make Komori uncomfortable? Wanting to keep bumps in the road from making the wheels do empty spins in the air, Ikigami added the suspension. But because it absorbs vibration, Komori can't feel the road surface through his feet. It doesn't seem like his pedaling power is reaching the road. If it makes the rider feel insecure, we have to change priorities. The rider's evaluation is important. Also, Ikigami discovered during the prelims that the road surface is smoother than he thought. He decides that having suspension isn't that important after all. He put a lot of work into that suspension, but after just one trial run, he decides to scrap it. He's able to assess a situation quickly and make bold decisions. That's the mark of an expert technician. Evening comes and the finals begin. Usually each team gets just one chance per day to run the course. They all try their hardest from the first day. One team exceeds 120 kilometers per hour. But the Japanese team is nowhere to be seen. Back at the hotel, Ikigami is still wrestling with the bike body. What's wrong? After removing the suspension, he can't tighten the screws that attach the cowl to the bike body. He checks each component carefully and discovers that the replacement fitting he used doesn't match the bike fitting. The central part of the fitting on the bike body sticks out about four millimeters. The original fitting had a hole to match the protrusion, but the replacement fitting doesn't. It takes a long time for Ikigami and his team to notice the tiny protrusion. Kenji Ishii handles bike prep. He quickly sets to work drilling a hole in the fitting. By this time, the day's races are already over. It's okay. The Japanese team loses the crucial first day of competition because they removed the suspension. It could affect their next run. Day two. On this day, the race is canceled because of heavy rain, a rare event in the desert. There's nothing the Japanese team can do. The rain ends by noon on day three. A meeting is held to determine the running order. 
every day. This meeting determines the running order for that evening and the next morning. Spots are limited. The fastest team gets to choose first, with other teams following in order. Japan has yet to race in a final heat. Seki asks for an evening spot. Spot number one. No, 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 you're below the cutoff. You're not fast enough. What a shock! Japan's shutout! Japan didn't compete in the first heat, so all they have is the prelim result. At this point, they've fallen from 7th to 13th place. Only the top 12 teams can compete in the evening. Being in 13th place, Japan has no choice but to run in the morning on day 4. Somehow, we have to make sure the bike is ready to ride by tomorrow morning. If we can just compete, we'll be fine. Team members were preparing for an evening run. You can't run today. We can't? Tomorrow? Tomorrow morning. Understood. It makes me nervous. <laughs> That's for sure. What do you mean? Uh, the competition's half over. About this afternoon, you can't run. What? Really? They're shut out for the first three days of the six-day competition. Evening. The other teams make their runs without Japan. Ikigami comes to watch. The other teams are posting faster times. Great Britain posts 120.54. France posts 122.97. And Canada, the world record holder, An amazing 142.04 kilometers per hour, a new world record. <laughs> Ikegami witnesses the moment himself. They're so fast. Unbelievable. <laughs> They'd aimed to break the world record, but they can't even get on the track. Preparing for the morning, Ikigami and Seki continue inspecting their bike late into the night. Japan is lagging behind. Junior and Nobuko arrive to lend their support. Hi, how are you? Hey, what's wrong? You seem a little depressed. You guys okay? How's it going, Komori-san? Well, what can I say? The bike feels really good. It's completely different, right? From the one you showed us in March. Yes. It looks much smaller. Yes, that's right. So, is the smaller bike harder to handle? Absolutely. What's hardest about it? There's almost no leeway for steering, only a little. How much? Uh, how many degrees? 2.5. 2.5? That's crazy. How can you steer? <laughs> right? We're really excited about this. Please give it all you've got. Good luck. Only three days left. The Japanese team will finally run the 8-kilometer course for the first time. Built after 10 months of work, their bike is in perfect condition. Closing. Yeah. 
Here we go. Are we good? Start! Oh, he fell! No good! They try again. For some reason, he can't get a good start. A third try. You okay? Yeah. Here we go. Release. Teams get four chances to start. One more failure and they'll be disqualified. Last time closing. Here we go. Good. He's off. Oh. Japan's disqualified. You're off the road. What happened? It's just too different. The front? Yeah. There's no way. Well, the next team's waiting. W what do we do? That's all for today. After four false starts, we're disqualified. It feels different? Yeah, completely. Impossible. What is? The suspension, I guess. The cause seems to be the missing suspension. What should I do? Better get out. The ride feels completely different than it did in the prelim. For competition bikes, speed has top priority. Startup balance is secondary. Through practice, the rider must somehow keep the bike upright until he gets going. Komori had no chance to practice after the suspension was removed. Thirty minutes later, the Japanese team gets good news. They say that if you and the French are able, you have permission to try another run. What would you like to do? Go for it. Yeah, let's do it. Two teams canceled today, so Japan gets a second chance. There's no time to fix the bike. But after falling four times, Komori has a better feel for it. He concentrates. Here we go. Releasing. Okay. Oh, a good start. Their first eight kilometer run. How much speed can Komori generate before reaching the 200 meter measurement zone? is the four kilometer midpoint. His speed is 105.2 kilometers per hour. He's already broken the 100 mark. Approaching the measurement zone, Komori kicks into overdrive.
He's in the zone. He's through. On day four, the Japanese team has finally made its first eight kilometer run. How did they do? 118.38. That's 30 kilometers per hour faster than their prelim run. <laughs> but their joy is short lived. A strong wind makes their result unofficial. After four days of competition, the Japanese team still doesn't have an official result. Just two days remain. Komori wastes no time after the run to ask Ikegami for further refinements. Ikegami-san, I need more gears. I need room to kick it up a notch when I can. We don't have many more chances. If we play it safe, we'll never break the record. What? Not enough gears? That's the heart of the bike! What can they do? Next time! The Top Speed Bicycle Project. See how it all comes out. With the competition more than half over, Japan still has no official score. Only two chances remain. If we play it safe, we'll never break the record. With his back against the wall, Ikigami comes up with a daring secret plan. This'll do it. They want the world record. Not giving an inch, the Japanese team hangs tough and has an amazing run. They achieve a speed that startles the world. I can't wait. Tune in next week. Choice of the day. NHK World Prime. Using only a pen, Manabu Ikeda creates massive, intricate drawings.